Savior, come let us adore the one who came for us. Glory in the highest, praise the name of Jesus, our King has come. For the outcast, the defeated, for the weary, for the weakest you came, Jesus you Break down the walls, push back the dark, light of the world, move in our hearts, the stirring in the spirit, heaven, something holy, can you feel? Let your glory and your power, let your majesty and wear flood the earth, flood the earth. Let the rumors of your kingdom, let your name without reserve flood the Your name. 
push back the dark light of the world moving our hearts heaven flood the earth break down the walls push back the dark light of the world moving our hearts heaven flood the pause for a moment just stand in his presence for just a second and give ourselves over to God this is our time we have one more song coming and we just want to take a moment and focus on the reason we're here if you need prayer today if you need someone to lay hands on you or agree with you we're up here but this next song let's spend time with the Lord just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I just sang another song take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you and I'm sorry when i've come with my agenda i'm sorry when i forgot that you're enough take me back to where we started i open up my heart to you i'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here 
for blessings. Jesus, you don't know me anything. And more than anything that you can do, I just want you. just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do Heavenly Father, we declare that today. Lord, that we ask for your forgiveness in a corporate manner. Lord, that our mind would not be on you or that we would, we would be lost in our own selves for those moments, Lord. God, as we just dedicate ourselves to you and we dedicate this service, Lord, we just ask that you would just hold tighter onto us, Lord. Thank you for never letting us go. Thank you for always being mindful of us. Lord, thank you for, for tracking us down when we run further and further away. God, we just honor that you, we honor you for just loving us when we didn't deserve it. But God, we just want to just say that we just want you, Lord. This is the place where humanity and the majesty meet, Lord where we are one with you and we say, Lord God, in relationship with you is like nothing else. This is all we need. God, we just ask that you would just put your stamp on our lives. Put your stamp on, 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 our, on our workplaces and in our homes and on this service, God. This is for you, Jesus. This is for you. We could just give you, if we could just give you the way, give to you the way you gave us. God, thank you. Thank you so much. We honor you and we love you. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You guys give it up for the worship team today. Did they not do a great job? Man, I'm super excited to be here.
You guys can be seated. You guys can be seated. We're going to transition into coffee talk real quick. So, ready, go. Man, long time no see. How you guys doing? Hey, uh, so today I really wanted to talk about this subject, and Stephanie and I have been talking about um, this thing for quite a while. So I, I just want to bring up a one-word subject, and I, I kind of want to have a discussion with you, if that's all right. So you're welcome to comment or have questions. If you have a question, just raise your hand. Damien has a microphone, and he'll be glad to, to meet you there. But I really want to talk to you guys about, uh, about Kanye. Can we talk about Kanye? Is that all right? We can talk about Kanye in this place. Like, look, you know what I mean? I mean, Con Kanye's claim to fame up until this past few months has, has been for me the reason why Jamie Foxx has a Grammy. You know what I'm saying? For a song that I would never repeat for you guys right here, but it's Jamie Foxx's Grammy, so we'll just accept it, right? You know, he's on his way to an EGOT and I'm for him. Uh, but ultimately, I wanted to talk to you about Kanye because man, is anybody else shocked by the Christian transformation that Kanye West seems to have made? I mean, really, uh, thank you. I got one hand, one, one person's with me on this. Huh? You haven't listened to any? Oh, so Kanye's album is 27 minutes long, and apparently there's a part two coming out, right? 27 whole minutes. Um, I have listened to the entire album, and I've watched several videos, not just of Kanye speaking, but of, of people who've gone to his Sunday services and, and, have, and have talked back about the things that said. So the words Kanye West held a, a, a Sunday service and over a thousand people gave their life to Christ is a sentence I never thought I would ever say, right? So, so, what, so what, kind of, what kind of category, what does that mean for Christians? What, what, do, what do you think that means for us? Can anybody want to chime in? And that all is not lost, absolutely. There, it is possible to save anyone, and I'm not saying that because I'm down on Kanye, Kanye said it himself, right? You know, it is God, God, is do, God can do a work in a person, and I, I watched a few things. When he, when he first dropped the album, I was probably the, the last person in our office to listen to it just because I'm older, you know, I think, but, but I, was little, I was really watching the different things about, about Kanye, and I, was, and I watched him on Jimmy Kimmel, and I watched him on, on, uh, on James Corden, and, I, and man, he, he was saying some stuff that I was like, Kanye, I was a Christian for 10 years before I ever understood, understood what you're saying. Like, for real, like, I, I didn't get the principles that you're talking about, or even the idea of being in complete surrender to God. Like, I could tell you that he stood on Jimmy Kimmel's stage, and Jimmy Kimmel asked him, are you, so Kanye, are you saying you're a Christian artist now? And, and Kanye said, I'm saying I'm a Christian everything now. And I was like, I don't know if I was on a stage and someone asked me a poignant question like that, if I would one-up them with Christianity. You know what I mean? I would have been like, sure, I would have been like, absolutely. You know, you can see me as that moving forward. I don't know that I would have thought about the statement and said, no, 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 I don't want to be remembered as a Christian artist. I want to be remembered as a Christ follower in everything I do. You know, and so I thought that was really neat. So I kind of wanted to get a, a, a little bit of perspective about it. But while we're, while we're thinking about our perspective or any questions, because I want, I want to answer it. As a church, I think this is our deal. But what I did notice in his videos was I said, you know, I, I've, I've prayed the prayer of salvation with, with some people, and I've, I've watched people get baptized, and I've watched people come to Christ and through, through our ministry and, and through the ministry of the churches that I've been a part of. And um, I'll tell you, there, there's a distinct point that happens when you see someone make a life change when you see their life reflecting something different today than it did the day before. And so I have to say that, that that was the impression that I walked away with after watching him on those just those two interviews. I said, there's something different about that man that we wouldn't know what to happen. So I wanted to play you one of my favorite songs. It's actually not my favorite song on his album, but it's the most, most talked about. So Dylan has it for me, and we're going to go ahead and, and go with Close on Sunday. I 
mean, if I have to be a musical scholar, the intro's a little long, Kanye, you know. All right, so um, obviously there's stuff to talk about in that song, but just in general, like that, even that song, which is elusive in how it reflects on things, I was like, man, it, you, I get the spirit of, of, you know, standing up in a way that maybe I wouldn't, have, I, I wouldn't stand up, especially early on in Christianity, right? And so I thought that was a really interesting thing. So I, I have like two or three minutes, guys, so... I wanted to kind of hear what you have to say, or if you have any questions about this. I, I want to field your answers in, in a way that's not just doing that. So who would like to, you're, you're welcome. Go ahead, Jared, go. Jared, who knew every wor word to Close on Sunday, by the way. <laughs> all right, so for context, um, like at A&M, like all of Chi Alpha went crazy when yeah. this thing came out. Because, like, a bunch of people even beforehand were like, do you think he's actually saved? Like, do you think it's yeah. real? Or do you think it's a hoax? And I was like, honestly, this is, like, some money-grabbing stuff. Like, whatever. <laughs> right? I, didn't, I didn't believe it at first. And then I actually sat down and I, I didn't even have Spotify before the album came out. But, like, someone had put in, like, the link for the Spotify thing. So I was like, all right, I'm going to download this and, like, listen to it and see what it's all about. And I'm like, I started listening to it. And I'm like, okay, I think this guy actually has had a God experience. Like, yeah. I don't know. I got, because, like, you know, the walk with God's tough, so I don't know how long he's going to be able to keep this going, but this guy definitely yeah. had a Jesus encounter somewhere along the way, and people were using it at our school for, like, ministry stuff, like, there's this, like, service Tuesday night called Breakaway, which is, like, this very large service, and, like, the week after it came out, they're, like, blasting the music and yeah. stuff like that, and so it's just interesting, especially on, like, a very large comp, like, college campus, like, how... Like, this has kind of created, like, a pathway for a lot of people to just be like, hey, like, let's talk about Jesus. Because yeah. like, Jesus obviously did something in Kanye, and, like, he's done something in me. He can do something in you, too, yeah. kind of thing. And so it's been interesting watching a lot of, like, the small group leaders in Chi Alpha and, like, College Station, seeing what they're doing with it and stuff like that. So I think that's pretty cool. And I think it's awesome. I think that, thanks, Jared. I think that uh, it is. It's, oh, it's opened up doors that would, were closed, like, literally the day before. Jesus' king drop, you know, so it, it's a really interesting prospect, and, you know, I always think about, you know, God says all things work together for the good, right, you know, despite what we, what we may think about it at first, or where our line is, uh, and, and you said something, I know Pastor addressed it for us, which where he was saying, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, we'll see what happens, or we'll wait, you know, man, is that the attitude we want people to take with us when we're, when we're newly saved, you know, I mean, really, we got to be like, hey, I'm with you, how can I be with you, how can I 
join alongside you. How can I help emphasize your message? So, man, thanks. That's good to know that we're that I'm not crazy. I like that. Anyone, anyone else have a comment or question? Go ahead, Mary. I have like zero time, so. I was just going to say that um, since Kanye's album has come out and things like that, I've been kind of, it's like my friends keep sending me music by all of these bands that they found since then who are mainstream pop kind of coming out of the dust and they're not afraid anymore. I mean, like, I don't know how to say that, but um, all sorts of these bands who are just all of a sudden just coming out here and saying, Jesus, yeah, you know, straight up at our concerts and our songs, everything, just let's go, you know, and it's like a cultural barrier has been broken because Kanye, of all people, has gotten up and said, "Listen, I'm just gonna be real with y'all," and suddenly there's just it's just growing, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I was reading some of the lyrics to my mom the other day because it was just you know not just Kanye but just all of these different bands, and you don't expect it. They're, they're people you don't expect it from. Yeah. And people who are reaching out to all of these kids and all of these teenagers and young adults who are living in such a lost generation, it's been helping me reach people. It's no, amazing. I like that. That's good because you think, you know, we, in a context, those of us who grew up in church or around church, when we're at our workplaces, we always feel like, hey, we can't mention this or we can't say that. So it's, a, it's kind of a, a wall that's been broken down where you feel a little bit where you have some common ground and able to, to speak freely about your Christian faith, and we should. Honestly, we should all be that bold. Honestly, we should really all be that bold, and it's not as rare as we think it is as we gather amongst each other or, or go in other places. There, there are more people just like us, and they are having similar experiences with Christ, and they need people to know to go to that have a, a solid foundation in Christ to know what it looks like and to look at them and be like, yeah, Kanye, I agree with you. We need to protect our homes. We need to honor the Sabbath. We need to honor things that God is honoring. You know, we need to, and we, we don't need to know how, so we don't need to be afraid from that thing. One of the things that I, I thought was interesting was that someone said something, you know, because they're like, well, Kanye's trying to start his own church, right? You guys hear that? You know, I mean, he's having these Sunday services on his own in these places. And this is it. I was, I was listening to an interview with him, and I, and I thought it was interesting because, you know, where, do, where would Kanye go to church? You know what I mean? Where, where is it that Kanye can go to church? Uh, we have a church, an Assemblies of God church in Oklahoma, where um, the, the owner of, of Hobby Lobby is a member and attends, right? But he attends very rarely. Because he has speaking engagements, he has other things. The man is Christian beyond Christian. He's written documents that tell you he's more Christian than you or I combined, right? You know, but the truth is, is that where do you go to church when you're on that level? You know, so I, I don't know how it works out, and I'm not, I'm not bashing Kanye what he's doing. I'm not, I think he's got a pastor with him. He has, he has um, you know, some pastors from Oklahoma and some pastors from around the nation who've gone and done his Sunday service with him. So I think he is reaching out, but it's just a matter of where exactly do you go in that status, right? Probably somewhere that I'm not going to go, right, every day. And so I think some of it is when you start Christianity, you have to find out how it fits in your life. And if you're willing to hold a service, even in your home or with those people that you love or around there and, and get deeper into the Word, then I think that's what it's all about and finding that place in the end. Or maybe it's somewhere where you can be a member, but you can't be an everyday member because you cause more chaos than the pastor on the stage. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a different deal. So I thought that was an interesting point. And there's a lot of critiques. Um, and we can address more of those. I just want you guys to know that, man, hey, I'm all for anybody's having an experience with the living God. Anyone. Anyone. I will go with him wherever you want to go, right? And hopefully I can maybe help him learn something or make a take, take a step or take a step where I took a misstep before, right? Because of, what, because of my actions and, and knowing that discipleship is key. So that's what I have for you guys. That's our 10 minutes. And that's, that's really what we have going on. So now let me knock out a couple of announcements for you. Um, Sunday services, 9 and 11 a.m. You can come here. Kanye won't be here. It's cool. Um, come at 9 and 11. Um, we're trying to get them, but I don't know, you know, right? Uh, anyway, so uh, be here. Actually, and we have 9 and 11 this week, and then the next two weeks we just have one 10 o'clock service. So if you're kind of putting your calendar out, make sure you do that. Sunday school is at 10, 10. Um, and then we have small group this Monday. This Monday? It's Christmas party day? Sunday, Monday? And then we have um, Connect classes this Sunday 
on December 15th upstairs. If you're new to the church or you don't know more about it or you want to become a member or you want to have questions, you want to talk about Kanye for an hour, you know, then we're going to be upstairs in 209 um, at the Connect class. You're welcome to do that. Uh, um, Christmas Fest is also this Sunday at 6 p.m. This is an incredible experience for us. You guys, if you've never been to a Christmas Fest, let me encourage you to be a Christmas Fest and let me encourage you as younger members of the church, this is an opportunity for missions giving. All right, opportunity for missions giving. Bless someone. All right, December 20th is drive through prayer, 8 to 9 and 4.30 to 5.30. Come put on your coat and your hat and come out here and pray with people for us. With us, Undie Sunday, white out. Bring your underwear, not your underwear, but bring new underwear in a package, socks and T-shirts. Bring that. We're going to collect those for um, to be given out at Unity Park in January. We're going to have a big thing up front. It's going to be an awesome service. That is on the 22nd. Buy your stuff now. Um, small group leader meeting is also on the 22nd. If you are interested in being a small group leader or are a small group leader, come. We'll have lunch. Winter schedule next week is our Christmas party here. So there's fun games. I think there's some gift cards and some other stuff. And it's ugly sweater, ugly sweater competition. So I don't own any ugly sweaters. This is the ugliest one I got, but um, I'll wear it. No, just get ugly sweater competition. Bring your ugliest stuff, wear it. And then we have no service on the 25th and on the 1st. All right. We are going to receive today's tithes and offerings. So um, there's a bucket back there in the back. Um, we'll get someone kindly to pass that around. And then I will pray with you guys. Lord God, we just thank you so much for all that we have. Lord, everything we have is yours. You created the heavens and earth, Lord, and you just, you blessed us so much. Lord, help us to give abundantly and help us to take that and use it for your kingdom here in North Fort Worth and especially in focus ministry, Lord, and we'll just give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. For me, Christmas has always been about reaching. As a child, I would reach high for presents stacked in my parents' closet, but I was always just a little too small and I could never reach it. And growing up, there were years gifts were just too expensive, so we would reach deep into our pockets hoping we could afford it. And as time continued, reaching just became expected. We lost loved ones, lost pieces of our family, and we were desperate for one holiday the way it was supposed to be. But still, every Christmas has been just another thing far out of reach never being tall enough rich enough or strong enough Christmas has always been about reaching but I've learned of this other thing a gift that exists that I want to reach more than anything there is this love that is deeper than the hurts that have happened to us. A love that is greater than the dreams that we've dreamt for us. A love that could redeem who we've been, piece together our hearts, and give a second chance to us. And when this new gift seemed just like everything else, wrapped up, placed high, and just too far for me, God said, I'm bringing love down so you can reach. And he let his overwhelming, never quitting kind of love come down so that it was available for even the weakest of us to receive love in the form of God's son, a child who looked just like us so that he would grow up, heal lives, die for us, rise from the grave and demonstrate what real love was to us so that new life was within our reach, so that real hope was within our reach, so that a second chance that could restore broken homes, broken families, broken hearts was within our reach. There is nothing we can do to be worthy enough for what's already come down to be given for free. Finally, Christmas, all this and every day of my life is no longer about reaching. Now it's about receiving, holding and enjoying a love that has come down to be found within Hello, how everybody doing this evening? Good? All right. Well, this evening I'm going to be um, <clears throat> discussing Luke uh, chapter 15. In Luke chapter 15, there's three things that, that uh, 
Jesus talks about in the parables, lost sheep, lost coin, and then the lost son. Um, the one I'm going to be talking about is the lost son. But just, to, just for you to get a reference of how important Jesus thought of about lost things and lost people in general, that he had three consecutive uh, stories about it. So it's, it's something very important. So the title of my sermon today is uh, The Father's Love. <clears throat> I want to begin with a story. Uh, basically, this story could be about me, about you. Um, as we grow up in life, things change. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a story about when I went to Six Flags with my family. You know, when you go to Six Flags, you're all excited. You want to be there. You want to run around the park. As a little kid, like at my age, I was 11, 12. Um, your parents always tell you, hey, I know you're excited. I know you want to get on the rides, but don't get too far from me. Stay close by. There's a lot of people in the park. But, you know, kids will be kids. Uh, if you take your eye off your kid for a few minutes, enjoying the scenery there at, at Six Flags, you could soon, he could soon, or she could soon be lost, right? Quite easily. So me, my, me being a little boy, I just walked around, you know, looking at the, the rides, and then we passed by all the kind of basketball hoops and throwing the rings and everything like that, and I became, like, asphyxiated to that, to that location. So I went, <laughs> I went over there, and I started watching and going, oh, man, I want to do that. I want to do that. You know how kids do. Um, but my brother and my dad continued to walk, so they didn't notice that I had stopped and... Uh, was paying attention to the game, so they, they kept walking. Uh, by the time I figured out that they continued to walk, um, I was lost. I was like, I started saying, hey, Dad, Dad, where are you? And I became very distressed, very nervous. Um, a guy came by and he said, hey, hey, guy, are you okay? Are you lost? What's going on? You know, where's your parents? And I said, um, yes, I'm lost. I don't know where my dad is. Um, and he basically said, come here, young man. I'm going to help you out took me over to the security offices they have, and you know they, what they do, they take you to that guest services where all the lost kids are at, and then they, they announce your name over the PA. Damien Rosario is lost. The parents of Damien Rosario, please come get him, right? And, and you get embarrassed, and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, everybody knows you're lost, right? So that happened to me. Um, but at the same time, I, became con I began to get concerned because I was like, now, when my, my father comes to get me, he's really going to be upset. So I'm like, do I really want him to come get me? I'm better off staying here, right? I was thinking to myself, but I knew I had to face my father. So he, when he came in, uh, the reaction was opposite of what I thought. He was worried about me. He said, hey, son, what, what, what's going on? What would you do? I told you, stay right by me. You know, you scared me. I thought I would never find you. And then the next thing he said, don't tell your mom. Come on now. You don't know about that? Don't tell your mom. Because he had to go home and face mom, all right? That's big problems. But I just want, there's a few things that God wants you to know about the Father's love. One is God's love is unconditional. You know, there's nothing you can do to earn that. He gives it to you freely because he loves you. You're a child of God, right? God always wants, wanted you in his family. You can see it throughout the Bible that you were wanted, you were planned, even when you was in the womb. He knew about you and he loved you, right? God looks past all our mistakes, choices, and, and forgives us of all our sins, no matter what we do. He loves us so much. And God will leave the 99 to find that one because you mean that much to him. So today we're going to be reading the parable of the lost son. And parables are short stories that illustrate truths. Uh, they make things easily remembered. And it also reveals things about the kingdom of heaven, right? That's important to us. So let's go to Luke 15, 11 through 13. And let's read. <clears throat> let's read that. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the youngest son got together all he had, set off, and set off for a distant country, 
and there squandered his wealth in wild living. Wow. You know, typically you don't ask your parents for your <laughs> for their estate inheritance before they pass away. That's kind of an insult, right? And in the culture, it's, pro it's kind of un unheard of, but it happened. But the father loved him so much that what is he going to do? He's going to give it to him. He's going to let him learn. So uh, <clears throat> there's a few things I want you to know about. And how many of you have siblings, friends, coworkers, they just refuse to listen to good advice? And I know you have some of those in your workplace and in college, you know, and you try and try and try. But the youngest son says to his father, give me my share of my estate. So he's bold about this. He says, I want it. And he's already thinking about what he's going to do. I'm going to go spend it somewhere. So he has plans. But he, he comes up to him. And he's, he's kind of entitled, right? Like, give me my share of the estate. It's mine. It's my, I'm entitled to this. So he's already having the plans, what he's going to do, where he's going to use it, when he's going to use it, how he's going to use it. So he says, I'm going to do basically what I want to do, right? So the father lets the son make his own decisions because sometimes you have to let your children make mistakes. You know, you can't walk them through every single thing in their life. So the father loves them so much that he says, I'm going to allow you to get, I'm going to give you the estate and I'm going to let you do what you think you need to do, you know? You say you want to do what you want to do, so let's see what you're going to do. But one thing, one thing I will tell you, if you live for yourself, you soon will live by yourself. And that's something that I heard. And I'm, not, I'm not a genius like that. I heard this, so, but I write it down. You know, things, you know when you go to church and you hear a sermon and something is really powerful and impacts you, you write it down. Because at a certain point in time is you can share that with somebody and it could be impactful on their life. So I wrote this down and it's been something that it walks with me and I remember that. If you live for yourself, you soon live by yourself. So in the parable, the son became a slave to sin as he left to pretty much please his fleshly desires. That's what he wanted to do. That's why he wanted to leave home. He didn't want to continue with the same song and dance, as they say, you know, uh, being a shepherd or farmer or whatever he was, you know, he didn't want to continue to do that. He wanted to have a, a different life. But I will tell you something, um, and Jesus said this, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and that's in John eight thirty four. So if you allow sin to set up camp in your heart, it will stay there, and it will set, and it will stay as long as you let it. And it, it, that's why you have free will. God gives you free will so you can make choices. So you make the choice. Are you going to let sin sit in your life or are you going to let it go? But sin will take you to some dark places. So I want to show you something about how sin, how you are, you're living for Christ. You're abiding in Christ and Christ is the center of your life, right? And... <clears throat> So sin takes you places you don't want to be. It costs you more than, than you want to pay. And you've heard stuff like that, right? But sometimes while you're sinning, you don't have the outward appearance. But to illustrate how it changes you from the light to the dark, I want to show you how this. So, you know, what you do, you get drunk. You have... Uh, what do I have here? Selfish ambitions. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, right? Sexual immorality. Envy. Hate. Lust. And you see how sin could change you from, from that, that point in your life where you're living for Christ and you're in the light and you are light and you are the salt, of the, the salt and you're everything that like the Bible says. But you can become dark by living for sin versus living for Christ. And this is just an illustration how you can change quickly without even really noticing it. And then when it overcomes you, it's hard to get back to the light, right? It becomes very difficult to come back to the light. But you can because God forgives you and he loves you. And that's what repentance is about. 
So I just wanted to show you that because sometimes seeing is better than saying it. You see how that can change your life, right? So Father God desires us to have a personal relationship with him and each one of us, right? But he will not force any one of us to have a relationship with him. He, will, he wants you to have a relationship with him because you love him out of your free will, not because of anything he has done to make you have a relationship with him. So in the parable, Jesus teaches us that life of sin, doing things our own way, will lead us away from Christ, right? It rebels. It separates us from Christ. It's not something that we want to do. And it basically is not fruitful. It's not something that will produce fruit in your life. It's something that will take you down. It, it doesn't build you up. So some of us listen to good advice and some of us don't. Some of us are the ones who say, have to fall before they can stand up, you know. And you're going to run into each, and sometimes you give them the advice, love them, and just sometimes they'll fall and just be there to love them and pick them up and encourage them. Uh, <clears throat> but we should embrace God's love and his authority and companionship in our life. Um, like Pastor Duffy had uh, a chair up here, and you remember the chair scenario, right? You give the throne of your heart to God or you want to keep getting back in the seat when it suits you. So if you give your heart to God, give, give him the seat, the throne of your heart, the seat of your heart, and let, let him be the total authority in your life. So be willing to give him the seat. So I'm jumping in my second point, wake up call. Uh, let's read Luke 15, 14 through 16. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. We all have heard the principle of... Uh, Sowing and reaping, the Bible talks about reaping and sowing, and you basically always hear, you reap what you sow. In other words, what you do is going to come back to you. Uh, some people say karma. There's different ways of saying it. But the Bible specifically says in Galatians 6, verse 8, whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction, but whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. And those are some powerful words that we should heed. So in the parable, the younger son aimed to please the flesh by what he was doing. He wanted to go out and party, had wild living, and that's what he did, right? But there's consequences to our actions. At a certain point in time, we have to face those consequences. So we have to live with those actions that we have. So he aimed to please the flesh by doing things, you know, being selfish, impure thoughts, lust, drunkenness, and other sins that he engaged in. So his own actions placed him in a desperate situation. And desperation, I'll tell you, will make you do things that you normally won't do. And I know some of you have been in a situation where you're so desperate, you're like, I would never do this. But... I'm at the point where I feel hopeless, helpless. So you do it. But you still have to, there's still consequences for that, though. But the point is, you can be that point, you could be that low point of your life. But there's still light at the end of the tunnel. You could always come back to Christ. You could always repent, right? But 1 John 5.19 tells us, we know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. So you see, the evil one wants us to <laughs> fall prey to the things of this earth, you know? Drink, smoke, uh, lust, pornography. There's a, there's a whole list of stuff that the evil one in, interjects into our lives to try to derail us from having that relationship with Christ and abiding in Christ and being in the light. 
So I had this movie, uh, and some of you might know this movie, it's called Stripes. It's a really old movie. It's a comedy, uh, it's kind of a comedy about the army. Uh, there was this guy in the, in the army, his name was Buddy Winger. He was a taxi driver. Uh, uh, he was kind of a guy who was kind of carefree, careless kind of guy. He had a girlfriend, but he did everything he like whatever. He was kind of like the whatever kind of guy. Whatever happens, happens, you know. So he decided to continue his carefree life. So he did things that were just pretty much selfish and just benefited him. And he didn't care how it affected anybody else. But one day, you know, after his girlfriend left him, he says, well, what else is left? You know, I'm 32 years old. So he decides I'm going to go join the army. <laughs> what a bright idea. At 32 years old, you're going to go join the army. But, hey, that was a fantastic idea. So he did. He went down to the recruiting station. He joined the army. So after being in, in the military, he, you know, he went through the processing. He's down there in the barracks the first day. And you go to sleep the first day, and, you know, they wake you up the next day. As soon as the lights come on, you're supposed to jump up to the position of attention and prepare and get dressed and get prepared for physical fitness training. Well, Buddy Winger, you know, he's 32 years old. He's brilliant. He thinks he knows everything and what's best for everyone. So he says, well, Drew Sanhoka, I, I think uh, it's 5 a.m., and I think we should all postpone physical training until we all better rested. So, uh, yeah, I'm going back to sleep. So Drew Sanhoka, what does that do? You know it makes him furious. And with a name like Hoka, you, could t you know he's mad. So what he says, okay, wise guy, how about we're going to make this 10-mile road march into a 15-mile road march? All right, everybody muster up and get outside. So you can tell right about that time, Buddy's not a good at decision-making, right? And he's definitely not a one that's uh, smart, and he basically just kind of cares about himself more than everybody else. But what I'm trying to say with all that is there are times where there's just punishment based on our actions. So in this sense, there was repercussion for his action, which was just based on his action, although it upset everybody else, right? So when we put ourselves in a desperate situation, it opens doors for the enemy to come in and take a foothold on our life. So don't leave the door open for him. You know, you're the one leaving the door open, right? God doesn't want us to give him any foothold in our life. He sure doesn't. And he loves us so much, and he wants us to have abundant life. So I want to get into my third point here. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? So we start in Luke 15, 17 through 19. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and, he, and here I am starving to death? I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and, and against you. I am no longer like one of your hired men. The first thing I noticed in passage 17 was when he came to his senses, right? There has to be a change for things to happen. So when you say, what, would I, what was I thinking when he came to his senses, it was like that aha moment is like, why am I here suffering and going through all this when my father has a beautiful house, lots of servants, lots of food, but he also knew that he took the inheritance and left, so he, there was a level of repentance in his, in his mind, and he knew, I have to go back and I have to make things right. So he was thinking about that, right? But also, there's times like the Apostle Paul, he was doing things like persecuting Christians, but he thought he was doing the right thing. He was, thought he was doing it for the right reasons. But sometimes we have to have that encounter with God, like he had that encounter with God on the road to Damascus, where he became blind, right, in order so that he can see what really was going on. It sounds kind of crazy, right? You get blind so you can see what's really going on. And sometimes our senses become heightened when we lose another sense. When you lose your eyes, when you're in the dark, in a dark room, 
you, you tend to listen and feel, right? You start changing, and other senses become more and heightened. So many, many of us have eyes but fail to see, right? What's happening directly in front of us. And sometimes losing that sight and reverting to that touch and to that hearing is what changes us. So the, the son thought he had everything figured out, but he didn't when he was in that predicament. He thought about home, but there are some essential things involved with repentance. And I'm just going to give you these three. Changing our way of thinking, like I said, verse 17, when he came to his senses. Acting based on our new way of thinking. So you have to take action, right? You can't just talk about it. And confessing our sins is most important. So don't let your temporary setbacks define who you are. You're going to go through situations. You're going to go through things that are not who may, you know, what they say. The saying is, Hard men last not, you know, tough times last not tough men. Hard times don't last, but hard men do. All right? Hard times don't last, but hard men do. That's the saying. And it's the same thing for all of us, men being male or female. It's universal. So. And um, I'm going to go with my final illustration, and then I'm going to have to stop here. Uh, when I was a paratrooper, in the army, we used to do things like jump out of airplanes, right? And I came to realize after 200 jumps that God has saved my life 200 times. And I really didn't think about it when I was jumping out of the airplanes. You guys can come up. But God saved my life 200 times because I jumped over 200 times out of airplane, but I never gave him the glory for that or thanked him for that. But, you know, hindsight, I, I, I think about it now. But we were on a, on a parachute jump and... One of the things we do when we parachute jump is we have to have our combat equipment, our helmet, our packs, our canteens. And in our packs, we have to have at least three days of rations and cold weather gear and things to prepare you in case you have to be out there longer than expected, right? Prepare for the unexpected. So one day we did jump, and one of our soldiers lost his goggles, his night vision goggles. So those, those are, called, are considered sensitive items, so they have to be recovered. So we spent an additional four hours out there searching for these goggles. But the whole point was some of those guys thought they knew better than anyone else, better than their leaders. So they didn't prepare themselves. They didn't have food in their pack. They didn't have the proper cold weather gear. But one thing happened out there was some of our senior leaders we had compassion for them instead of uh, punishing them, basically. We got together and we figured out what do we do, what do we have? So we took what we had and we gave it out to those who didn't have. So that was just one, one illustration of kind of like how you can react in different ways in situations. You could either, you could either have compassion or you can punish somebody, right? But through, true unconditional love is witness in that even though we are sinners, God loves us. Let's be in oneness with the Father. And, and when I say in oneness with the Father, is that we are able to hear his voice when he speaks. And live a life worthy of your calling. So my time has run out, but I thank you so much for, for this time. For allowing me to share what God has put on my heart. But my challenge tonight is the same words I ended with. Live a life worthy of your calling.
Thank you for bringing us here tonight. Thank you for the community and fellowship that we can have with one another. I pray that we just continue to pursue you this week and um, just rely and find comfort in the love that you have for us and that we're a light to everyone around us. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next week.